and welcome back, folks, to another episode of Short and Sweet. I am Corey Kukuru, joined by Heather Atwood. How are you, Heather? I'm good, Corey. How are you? Great. We're talking all things food and drink in and around Cape Ann. We have a great guest today we're going to uh, introduce you to in just a bit. Uh, but first of all, Heather, we want to say uh, congrats to the first two episodes that we've done so far. Yeah. It's been fun. I know. It was really fun. Yeah. I, I like them. And it's time to get back on a roll again. Uh, so what's the latest? I know you went away for a little bit. I went to Michigan for six days. Uh, my daughter's a student at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. The weather was just as miserable out there. <laughs> oh, really? I can tell you that. I wasn't. I, I didn't win. There yeah. was no win in the weather department. And did you do any special Michigan eating while you were out there? I did. I did. For real? And uh, Yeah. And actually, we ate a lot because we worked so hard during the day. We were packing up her apartment and cleaning out her apartment. And then she's in ROTC, so she had drill. That My poor daughter was working really hard. She needed a good meal every night. Oh, nice. And I made sure she had one. Yeah. So the big thing in Michigan right now, as is, is are in Massachusetts, we are so suffering for a lack of green things that we're really willing to eat anything green that comes out of the earth. Uh-oh. So ramps. Ramps what? are the yeah, ramps are the big thing in Michigan, and they are also big here. What is, I have no idea what that is. A ramp is like a wild garlic. Oh. So it's uh it has a you know that that sharp taste. It has a bulb. It has a green leaf that pops out of the earth. Huh. And they're little. They're maybe, um, you know, like eight inches tall altogether. And the little bulb part is just like a half an inch wide. Oh. And people get really excited about ramps. I thought you were going to say fiddleheads. I was getting the uh, same yeah, thing. People can look no. forward to them. It's here for a short burst. Yep, exactly. I'm and and truly, I am just not a fiddlehead fan. Really? Yeah, I'm not. I like them. You do like them? Yeah. yeah. I always feel like this is this is so New England that we're so desperate for something to eat at this point <laughs> that we eat these little ferns. Well, the coolest part about the podcast is um, we have smell a vision No one else yeah. does, but we do. And we have a great treat to share with you all today. So, Heather, why don't you introduce our guest for episode three? Yes, I am so delighted to have Agnaldo Oliveira here. Am I saying that right? Yes, you are. Uh, thanks, Agnaldo. <laughs> and uh, he is the chef and owner of the Blue lobster grill in Rockport, Massachusetts. And we talked a couple of years ago about this really interesting dish that you are going to introduce today. But first of all, Agnaldo, I'd like to just talk a little bit about you. Get, can you tell us, you know, where you grew up and what your sort of, what your story is? Good morning to you guys. Thank you for having me here, Corey. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm a region from Brazil. I grew up on a farmland. I mean, we used to do all our stuff on. We used to plant beans, rice, corn. Everything was done by ourselves. How about ramps? You got ramps there? No. <laughs> <laughs> <He's checking. laughs> no, we try to concentrate most on the meat. That's the good stuff. Yeah, that did. yeah right. We raised pigs and everything. So that's our, our background over there. So, Was it close to the ocean at all? Not really. No. Kind of close. I mean, it's three and a half away, hours away from, from the ocean. Oh. Yeah. So. so what was your journey to the U.S. like? Well, it was great. I mean, I was looking to have a better life with me and my wife and raise a family. So here we are right now. So things are working out great for us. So the, and the rest of your family is back in Brazil? My mother is in Brazil. My yeah. father passed like three, four years ago. Aww. My sister is in Portugal. She's been there for about 20 years. Mm-hmm. She, she has a family over there. She has three kids over there. Well, how, so, how often do you get back home? Uh, I try to go every year. I mean, last time I've been there was like Mother's Day last year. So it's been about a year. Mm. Nice. So, and how did you find your way to Rockport? I, uh, when, I, when I came to the United States, my cousin used to live in Rockport. So he, used to, uh, he was here for quite, for quite some time already. So I stayed in Rockport for just two days and moved to Framingham. Mm-hmm. He stayed in Framingham for, I think, six months and moved back to Rockport. It's been about 19 years now yes, since yes. I've been in Rockport. <laughs> so, <laughs> And you had kind of a significant job when you started to work in Rockport, right? Yes, yes. I started uh, as a dishwasher at the Greenery back in the days in 2001. The and Greenery. The Greenery, yes. Greenery yeah. right? The green, yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. I worked there for nine years. I started as a dishwasher, no, speak, no English speaking or anything, and worked my way up there to become a cook. That's amazing. That's just like so much the American story, right? Yeah. And how are you? So how do you learn the language? Just, just from being around? Just being around, walking around. I mean, I was everywhere I went, I had to have someone to translate for me. And so I just got, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to be doing that anymore. So I shut down all the Portuguese language for me. Like I have no, TV, no resilient TVs in my house. Yeah. Nothing like that. Only watching American channels, like the friend, Friends show. I used to watch it like a lot and put the uh, caption on it. So 
anything that happens over there, I'm watching, and we'll go back on awards and try to mm-hmm. find out what that means, and and also being around a lot of Americans on the job. And so you have to translate Joey. Yes. <laughs> we just <laughs> stopped. Friends, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I learned and start reading like all the uh, all the recipes that I have they had in the books over there. I try reading and start learning that, and and two years later I was one of the guys behind the line. That's amazing. So. I have to tell you my really quick food story about uh, working in the kitchen in Boston years ago, and there were a lot of Brazilians in the kitchen, um, you know, just like you. They had immigrated here. They didn't speak English. But we started to speak like them, and we started, everyone in the restaurant started, instead of using the word food, we started calling it fooch because they have that, that extra That's chish it, yeah. in there. So it w- when we had our staff meal, it was called fooch. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So now how does this turn into, you're at the greenery, Right. How young are you when, when when you get here? I think it's like 22, 23. Right. And then, so now you work your way up. Now you're you're in the line. And then at what point do you get this transition where it's it's you're a chef and then eventually owning your own place? Well, I started like the uh, the restaurant closed down, the greenery. Mm-hmm. It was it went from the greenery and then became a seashell. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was yeah. one right. short season, one season. And came to a point that I told my my boss I I couldn't stick around anymore, so I left and uh, worked someplace else. And meanwhile, I got a, my green card that I was waiting for ten years, mm. and I traveled back to Brazil for like a couple months. When I came back, I uh, worked in a couple of different restaurants, and I I called the owner of the, of the building like, "What's the chance of me getting there? Try to get that place going." So to purchase gave, it, you wanted yes. to buy it. Yeah. Wow. So how cool is this? So you started the greenery, and then just a few short years later, you have your own spot at, if you don't know, we're at 15 Dock Square in Rockport now, is where Blue Lobster Grill is, and you can't beat the real estate. That's a pretty cool story. Yeah, yeah it really is. That's legit American dream stuff right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. So I started that in base, like, we opened May 19th of 2011. Mm. We opened the uh, Blue Lobster Grill. Yeah. And it was We've been there for like what? That's my eight, ninth season, right? right. Now, so. Yeah, I well, mean so that alone. Even if you're not a relatively recent immigrant, to have a successful business in Rockport for eight or nine years, that's go saying you. something. <laughs> yeah, I know, especially in this industry too. That's awesome. So, what do you love about what you do? Uh, everything. I mean, I love, I love cooking. So, so you've always just as a young child, you were just always not really. I get the passion once I started being behind the line and try uh-huh. different things, and once you do that, like Heather, she loves doing like. The food stuff, and she loves to travel around, eating different food, and like I do. <laughs> <laughs> say that, okay. So I, uh, I got the passion for, it, so I loved it. So, and I was really hope, looking forward to one day, be able to bring that dish to the, uh, to the, uh, to the restaurant. So I finally was able to do that, and I did that in 2016. Nice segue, right. no, yeah, though. I like very, that. I like the perfect. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the dish. Yeah. Uh, um, all right, you, you introduce it for us, please. Well, this is the muqueca. That's uh, from uh, the Espirito Santo. There's two ways to make that. There's uh, one from Espirito Santo, there's one from Bahia. The uh, one from Bahia, we use the uh, dende oil, which is like a palm tree oil, mm. and the coconut milk. Okay. And from uh, Espirito Santo, we don't, don't use that. That's the basic olive oil. And the, uh, that's the one, um, that one right there. That's the one with the olive oil. So th- that's what where I was a little bit confused trying because I have made mocaca with the coconut milk yes. and the palm oil and I knew yours was different so I thought it maybe had a different name but it's just from a different region different region the Spirito de Santo Spirito Santo that's the one over there and there's the one from Bahia that's the one that has the palm tree oil the uh, coconut milk so they're both called mocaca same thing yes but this one is prepared in that special dish yes. right yes correct. That's made on the uh, on a handmade clay pot. That's like you cannot get that in the United States. You have to go in Brazil to get one of those. Nice. So, and that's called a what? A panela. Panela de bajo. Panela de bajo. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. back up just a tiny bit and uh, tell us about the menu at the Blue Lobster Grill because you have traditional American things except for the moqueca. Correct. Yes, we have most of the stuff is American dish. It's like we have the seafood linguine is how like seafood and with the cream sauce. We have the bully base, which is like a, a red tomato sauce that we made in the house and nobody else makes that in the building. I'm the only one allowed to make that sauce because I wanted to taste the same and I have people coming over and over just for that. And over the years, I noticed that people want that, but in a small version. So I made that at the, the uh, seafood store. 
which is today it's one of my biggest sell in the mm. building which is like a small bully base but doesn't come with di- it doesn't come with pasta how it is that's the the, the sauce and the seafoods like scallops calamari salmon uh yeah, shrimp mussels and, this is a tomato basil yes broth. tomato doing... basil broth and got a little uh, what do you call a saffron mm. and a uh, basil and all the stuff together and a little bit of kick of the cayenne peppers but it's nice. not very spicy you just feel a little bit but uh so, so that's really good. But what made you think about, okay, I have to have this Brazilian dish on my menu too? I what, want, what I, I think everybody in Rockport does the same thing. I want something different. I want to be the place you know, for, for that, for something different that I did. And, and believe me, it's been, it's been come like that because a lot of people calling us, we have that today. And that's because it's made Mokeka. out of like, yes. Mokeka, yeah. It's made out of like 100% fresh, wow. fresh seafood, fresh vegetables. I don't keep that in the wintertime because I want to make sure that everything is fresh and there. So, like, I've been people, got people calling in to see, okay, you have that today. So I'm like, yes, we do. So from now on, we got to start doing that daily. So that's... Well, I used to say it was the best thing to eat in Rockport when I, the first time I tried it. It is delicious. Mm. And it's served piping hot, right? Yes, it's it, served in this clay it pot. It goes straight from the uh, stovetop to the table. So that's why I have that little stand because when I first started, I put on a plate. It was burning my plates. Yeah, on my yeah, white really. plate was getting like <laughs> black on the bottom because of the heat, too much heat on it. So I, I had someone in Brazil made those stands for me. Nice. So now they go to the table like that. Yeah. So it comes boiling. So is there fish in this? That one? one's the fish one. Okay. And yes. what kind of fish do you use? A haddock. And is it because, is haddock a more firm fish when you use it in stews and it's, soups? It's, it's firm and also there's like no bones on it. In Brazil, you they use a... Uh, there was a ocação, which is like, I, I think in the version, American version, would be like almost like the uh, the dogfish. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Also, just that. another white fish, yes. too. Yep. And they use that over there. But in here, like, because the bones, that one, the hat doesn't have a lot of bones on it. So I choose that fish because that's more like flaking and cooks perfect. And then once you cook it, you can see the fish right into it. So, so we are going to lift the lid eventually, but not yet. So can you tell us what's different about mo- this, this mocaca as opposed to seafood stew? What's different? The seafood stew is made with a with a white sauce, right? And we uh, with the, I'm sorry, the red sauce, which is tomatoes, tomato, tomatoes, tomato, base, tomato yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we made that sauce. We made that ahead, and once you get the order from from that, we put the f- seafood in it, cook the seafood first, and then add the sauce to it. And this one, we with this tomatoes, cilantro, uh, green onions. So you cook, you put that in together with the garlic. And put the fish on, seize the fish with lime, with a little bit of lime juice, mm-hmm. salt, pepper, and put it in and cook together. Oh. So that one steams out together. So you get the broth. There's no water out to what the broth you get in there is exactly from the tomatoes and from the fish itself and all the vegetables cooking. So don't, nice. there's no add, nothing odd to that. What is it about the clay pot? That's a tradition, okay. and it helps. Like it, a presentation also cooks better in there. So why is it, why is that? I, I could not tell that. That's mm-hmm. how we are. They've been doing that for years over there. Huh. So, I mean, I decided to try to do that, and that I looks love really it. Cool. Can you tell us a story about going to Brazil to get the clay pots? Yes, I can. Uh, <laughs> actually, my wife, I, she uh, she was kind of she got a little sick for the uh, for for 2016. She got a morning. She got a very like concerned about that. It was pretty serious. Mm-hmm. So she decided to take a break for the summer. So she went over there for. For 2016, she spent like three months in there, so I went with her. And meanwhile, I want to bring those things back. I want to bring the clay pots so bad. Because you can't get them anymore. No, you can't. I try, I search everywhere online, you cannot get them. So I went over there and I brought them 10 of those with me, which is only one made back, right? So (laughs) sad. (laughs) (laughs) Only one made back, so I have to hold on for that. So while my wife's in Brazil, I, I ended up going back three times. I mean, I've never been away from my family. We've been together for a long time. And in the last 18 years, that was actually at the time was 16 years that we've been in the United States. We never separated from each other. Mm-hmm. I had my two kids. I had a, right now is 11-year-old and a six-year-old girl. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of felt kind of lonely in my house. Being at work was fine, but once you get inside the house, the house became so big. I'm like, you know what? I cannot be doing this for like three months. <laughs> oh, that's so, sweet. so I took off a week. Yeah. And just a week, and like this time I did not bring anything in. And that's how my husband felt when I was in Michigan. Yeah, it's. it's <laughs> <laughs> Keep telling yourself that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then in, uh, <clears throat> after Labor Day weekend, I traveled back to Brazil for two weeks. So that was kind of my vacation for two weeks. And so we, we kind of set the way to like bring those in. My wife wrapped them around the blanket. 
and make sure they we brought in like a 10, 10 or 12, and every single one of those made back at that time. Oh, there Yay. we go. Yeah, so they finally <laughs> right. made back. So is this one of them? It actually, it is. Oh, yeah. all, right. all right. Out of those, like those are bringing in, I think I have like six, six left. Yeah. Because over the uh, it, you use them a lot, like in the special summertime, I'm doing those over and over, mm. and it's like they're gonna crack eventually. So they're doing that right now. So yeah. So you have to resupply. Yes. Yeah. So I, uh, when I had this dish in your restaurant, you lift that lid and it was like it was still boiling. Yes. It was it was so great because I love stews hot and things like that. Um, that won't be happening here. So, but I don't want to lift the lid yet. Before you tell us what the sauce is, what's going on with that sauce? That over there, that's uh, called uh, pirão. That over there is based the same stuff that's in that pot. We cook them together and then you add the uh, cassava flour, which is a root. Hmm. which is we call in Brazil manjoca. So they like we shave them out and like you roast them and make a flour out of that. So Interesting. So you take some of the, the broth yes. out of the pot and then you add the cassava flour to thicken it a to little bit. To thicken them out, yes. Yeah. So we're, you're really basically adding a, more of the, the flavors from this stew. Correct, yes. Yeah. So we're going to serve and the rice, anything special about the rice? Oh, it's just a regular rice that I make over there. I also don't let anybody else but me and my wife make the rice because I like the rice firm. I don't like the rice like like a soup. The rice is going to be like nice and firm. So, and uh, that's how I like to cook it. So, and that over there, I have a garlic, onions, and uh, saison to give that color over there. I also have saffron on it. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, we make a I rice over there. I love that saison stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Well, I think, are you ready to try it, Corey? Yeah. Okay. Let's so do I'm going to jump up. Yeah. And so try while this. Heather gets that ready, I'll just say once again that thanks for joining us here on Short and Sweet with Heather Atwood. And I'm Corey. We're joined today by Agnaldo Oliveira. Of, he's the owner of the Blue Lobster Grill at 15 Dock Square in Rockport. We really appreciate you doing this with us. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me in here. Yeah. This is, this is fun. And, uh, Probably the best part of the show right here <laughs> <laughs> is we get to serve the mukaka. It smells so good. And, and, yeah. the, uh, and the secret of all that dish, it goes boiling to the table, is because the cilantro cooks really well. Mm. Once you bring it to the dining room, everybody goes, what's that smell? Oh, yeah. And they want to try that. Yeah. And that's how, we, like, we sell a lot of those. Yeah. And we have to – I can't – emphasize enough the spot that you have over uh, on the corner of like dock square and bearskin neck is gorgeous beautiful view out the motif number Correct. one yes we we have one of the best view in town yeah. yeah and you're and now we're getting ready to open now for the seasonal hours right which Correct. would be yes uh we are hopefully like another week we'll be kicking in from 11 30 into like nine o'clock oh, really? yeah so by the time you see this folks it's every day yes right at 15 dock square if you want to can they try this out yeah, sure. Ooh. The mocha is on the menu, right? Uh, it's not on the regular menu, but it'll be on a special menu oh, daily. Cool. So that uh, that doesn't come out of the menu. Okay. I was gonna say I don't know if you had like the uh, Blue Lobster Grill had like the secret menu. You know. <laughs> I'm gonna let you try first, Corey. Oh, you I am. Pass it around. All about it. So uh, I need to tell you, Agnaldo, that I had decided it was like the best single dish you could have in Rockport. But a friend of mine said the same thing, and he didn't even know that I had experienced this. He said, oh, my oh gosh, boy. we ate at the Blue Lobster Grill. It was amazing, and they have this fish stew, and he had brought out-of-town guests. So he was raving it's, about it, it too. Seemed that's, that's, the, uh, that's my idea to come up, bringing that over, because that's why it goes Rockport. What do you eat? Lobsters, fried clams, fried shrimp, and a couple of di pasta dishes that I make. But uh, my idea is to bring that in there. People coming in, they want to come over just for that dish. Yeah, so, I do. And it's made with local wow. fish. You it's know, so it's good. still a local yeah. dish, you know. Isn't that delicious? It's still it's absolutely awesome, yeah. Yeah. I think it blows away bouillon base, frankly. But Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that. The fish is but the, I'm so sure bouillon great. Base is great. That's really yeah. It just breaks apart. Yeah, I like that a lot. The flavors like I would awesome. get that. I'm like a soup and stew freak too. Could I crock pot that? Don't you think? I think you could, right? You could. Make it in a crock yeah. pot? Yeah. So, Agnava, will you share a recipe, or is that too hard to no, I try to keep that of myself. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can you fake it? <laughs> <laughs> it is not online. No, it's, it's you, not. You cannot no, find this not. recipe. No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it took a couple of tries. I, I think I tried to make that dish like five times. Yeah. And should I come up with that with that one of it? Just bring the, uh, the way I want it, so and be more closer to Brazil. Yeah, and so... And for locals now, this is nothing like, say, the fish stew at Halibut Point that you nothing. would get, which mm -hmm. is spicy, and that's more of a tomato-based broth. Which is a all. great one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is completely different. Mm -hmm. 
mm. and it's light but has some heft to it. I mean, I don't know. It's it's really good. We we also there to serve the Brazilian a Brazilian hot sauce that I have. Someone makes that for me. Oh yeah, you serve, no way. Serve, I forgot to bring that one, which is. I have someone in Gloss, a Brazilian person that makes that sauce for me. Oh, Mega, wow. A big container, bring, and every, every one of those dish, we serve with a little uh, hot sauce on it. Wow. What's the name of the day. hot sauce? It's just like a, we use like what do you call it, a little chili. Yeah. We make that mix that with oil, some little spice on it, and, yeah. and let it sit for like months, and that's how we serve that. I have I have a, about like a gallon sitting in my house right now being ready to yeah, bring really. to the restaurant. And yeah. so when you're when people are ordering this, is it mm. is a um, Will they do that as a meal? As a meal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the guy who cooks, so he probably did a good job. You trust him? <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's so light. And I the cilantro in there, and the um, I can even get a little bit of the lime. It is so good. And this is your go-to dish when you're a Blue Lobster? Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. something. I'd love yeah. that. Yeah, I have... Uh, I had someone called yesterday. They called actually in January. Look for a reservation. Why is they asking if that's going to be on the uh, the menu? On the menu, and they called back yesterday just to make sure that was going to be the menu because there's a big group of six. Mm. They want to come in. That's where they want to get it. Yeah. No. I. It's really. It's just such a. Um, again, you don't feel like you're eating. You feel like you're eating local food, but with such a more interesting treatment. <laughs> you know. So. The first thing I thought. When I that first touched my lips was that's Gloucester Haddock. Yeah. Like that's local. Like you, it's new right off there. Like, oh, that's the haddock I have, and it was just in a, just a little different way. Different form, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. I, I, I get that all the time. Right. Yeah. Any. Yeah. Super stews. I am all on board for. So I, uh, I serve that. Of, I have the, uh, the regular one, the fish. Mm-hmm. I have the shrimp and fish. Mm. Oh. I have the shrimp only, just shrimp, and I also have the seafood, which is come with shrimp, fish, scallops, and mussels. And also, uh, this week, I'll be doing the lobster one. Mussels, you said. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And this one, I have lobster? one of straight up lobster, like one lobster. Oh. So we would be cooking like right into that. Yikes. So is it lobster out of the shell, obviously? No, we're going to cook with the shell on it. In the pot? Yes. That's going to be that's great. That's a great visual. Yeah, that is really great. Yeah. Wow. So that's a new one. I haven't made one. I'm making like just to try out, but I'm, I mean, they cannot go wrong with that. No, this is going to put you on the map, so. like internationally. <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about um, incorporating like more Brazilian dishes into the menu of Blue Lobster? Mm, not really. I mean, at this moment, I want to stay with just with that mm-hmm. because once you do that, you want like I actually get a lot of Brazilians coming over. I have people coming from Cambridge. They heard about it. Mm-hmm. Actually, there's another restaurant over there that served that dish, but they heard about us. They came over and they loved it, and especially there's people from Peabody. That comes over most Sunday, like for now in the summertime, I'll be seeing a lot of them coming in. So, but I'm this moment I want to. So it makes it special. Those. Yes. Yeah. I want to keep just that dish for now. I don't want to do anything else. How about Brazilian desserts? Aren't there a lot of really interesting Brazilian desserts? Mm, the one very popular with is the flan. Flan. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. And my wife makes one that's like. Whew. Oh really? <laughs> do you serve that? Not really. No. She wants to do that. I. I mean, I, I, we are considering starting doing that now. Mm. We're gonna keep like we we serve like. Uh, apple, uh, apple pie, uh, yeah. blueberry pie, but I want to try to keep that one on the you know, I would do too, flan. So. I think, uh, and I really like, I like the Portuguese, I've had the Portuguese version. I like that a lot more than like the French one. I think it's got, sometimes do you use condensed milk in it? We use condensed milk in yeah. ours. Oh, I we love use that. Con- uh, my wife makes with condensed milk, uh, milk and uh, what do you call it? Cornstarch and oh, eggs. Oh, right. No eggs, maybe. Eggs. Eggs, eggs. okay. Cornstarch and uh, she makes uh, like the, uh, the sugar caramel eyes on it. Right. So, Really so nice. it's like I don't know much about Brazilian cooking. So what are just some of the signature either ingredients or methods or styles that that sort of signify Brazilian cooking? Well, the uh, Brazilian cooking most like as you see, if you talk about Brazilian food, most people think about meat. If you go in like, most uh, out of town over here, you don't see like a, a Brazilian restaurant that serves this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Most it goes from the we call it churrasco, which is the uh, they serve that around the uh, on the skewer for you. What is it called again? Churrasco. Okay. Which is like they cook that on the uh, on the on the uh, skewer, uh-huh. and they bring that to the table and we slice that right in off the uh, skewer for you. So and that's it's beef. It's beef. Yeah. They, I, we do everything with beef. Uh, there's like a what do you call it? linguiça. We have the uh, chicken wings, mm. uh, chicken hearts, which is not big for a lot of people, but Brazilians love the chicken hearts. Well, let's <laughs> do that <laughs> next week, Heather. Yeah, chicken exactly. hearts. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so both, but the seafood stuff is most concentrated just into that. So there's no much on the uh, yeah. on the Brazilian stuff, but 
when you talk about Brazilian, people talk about mostly the churrasco. Right. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. Well, yeah. I'm glad I now have uh, moqueca in my vocabulary because right? that was yeah that was an A plus. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. My bigger problem that I found when I first started serving that is getting my server to pronounce that. <laughs> they couldn't even these days. Some of them cannot pronounce the pirão, which is like mm. it's tough for them. So I'm like, okay, guys, if, if you want to serve this, you want to make sure that you know how yeah, to, right, what you're talking right. about. Yeah. You so, could bottle that pirão. That's Am I saying it right? Pirao? Pirao. Pirao. Yes. Um, that is so delicious. Thank I you. That I appreciate too. that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you have we it. taught you something, right, Corey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what we wanted out of the show. And I mean, the food's awesome. It's great. But you and I both know Ignaldo a little bit from over the years. So it's cool to, just to catch up, see where the Blue Lobster's at these days, hear your story. Like, it's a great story that you shared with us, too. I mean, really coming from Brazil, I think that's so awesome. Starting right. at the greenery and then eventually being there and doing your own thing. So hats off to you, man. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's like a lot of work, but my wife and I do what we like. Like, we both of it seven days a week right now. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, at some point, Heather, we're going to have to go there hey, and do one of these shows. Right? Because yeah. we need to see the lid come off and the bubbling stew. Yeah, but we, we might have to, we might need flan for that as well. And lobster. Let and me know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife makes the best, so I'll make sure that she makes some for you guys. So. Okay. Awesome. I actually might start thinking about putting that on the menu. So. You should put that on the yeah. menu. I, I mean, what a meal that would be, the moqueca with the flan later. Ooh, That's, Virginia way, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ignaldo, for being here. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I appreciate yeah, for having me. If people want to learn more about Ignaldo or the Blue Lobster Grill, you can just go to Blue Lobster dash grill grill with an e yes, dot com dot com correct or go see him at 15 dog square in rockport the place is awesome so thanks again heather that puts a bow on episode number three <laughs> all right we're at, how we doing so far so good okay. almost full though we gotta finish this yeah i know right? all right see you soon thanks all right thank you guys i appreciate thanks. it Right, and welcome now to the short and sweet side dish. We have a little supplemental conversation here, uh, kind of like our after dinner mint, uh, if you will. Our tapas. So, yeah. Tapas. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're here with Ignaldo Alvera of Blue Lobster Grill in Rockport. And so I want to ask Ignaldo what some of your favorite Brazilian dishes are and maybe places where you go to, to eat authentic Brazilian food. Well, when you talk about Brazilian food, like people only think of, like Brazilian especially, they think about meat. Mm -hmm. That's why you eat which is, I have for dinner last night in my house, so I made it my grill and like, but uh, so the tradition. So it's a grilled beef. Yes, yeah. but the traditional one is done on a skewer, which is they put over the grill and like, it's, it's spinning around. Yeah. And once it's done, most restaurants, they have a, a little round, they, a round uh, sign that says, there's a stop and go. So if they bring to your table, you flip that over with a go, with the green sign. Say, so keep bring that to you. Like, they bring it over like you want some, uh, some siloin, it just lies for you on a plate. Uh -huh. Just keep bringing it over, and once you don't want it anymore, I just flip that sign and stop. <laughs> now that is a new restaurant treatment. That's I a have, dangerous idea yeah, for you Americans. Have, <laughs> <laughs> you're not kidding. That's yeah. like all you can eat in a whole different way. Right. They used to have the best one used to be in Peabody, but they they closed down. It used to be called uh, Fire Fireball. Oh really? Yes, they closed down, but now they have uh, there's like a couple ones in uh, in Everett. There's one in East Boston. So they have they great restaurant to go. Like we well, me and my wife and my kids sometimes we go over there when when some Brazilian treatment. So it's uh So I I know that Brazilian cuisine is really connected, just like the language, to Portuguese cuisine, right? Yes. What's the difference? What or what how are they similar and how are they different? How mm, would you describe it? I couldn't really explain that to you. Yeah. Okay, but uh, I know like in Portugal they, they eat a lot of seafood. Right. In Brazil, it's most meat. Mm. So it's like I, I used to live in Portugal. Like they have famous for the bacalhau right. over there. So in Brazil, we also they do we do that over there. I myself, I haven't tried that make no. that dish yet. Right, but that's I, tough for Americans. Yeah. The salt cod. Yes, they, they have a hard. Is time that the gums de sa? The salt cod. Bacalhau. Yes. bacalhau. Yeah, bacalhau. It's like very popular, especially around like uh, the Good Friday. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. very common because the like, Catholics don't eat the meat, so they, they concentrate it's on that. Fishes, yeah. So right. they eat this fish, and that's very popular in Brazil at that time. And But the thing is, like, not a lot of people can eat those because they're so expensive over there. Which part is the, what, the, the cod? Salt, the the cod? salt cod, yeah. Uh -huh. It's expensive over yeah, there? Yeah, you can go over here and buy that for nothing. You go in Brazil, oh, no, it's like... 
Wow. You worth like 20, 30 bucks a pound over there. And that's it. So that's what salt cover with egg usually, right? Hard boiled eggs. We do, size, size, right? we do not do the eggs over there. Okay. Yeah. I think the, the eggs one, I think, is more like Italian way or something. But oh, not really? Yes. Maybe Portuguese, yeah, I think. The Portuguese. And how about the chorizo? Because that's a real Portuguese. The, uh, the, the, I think the, the chorizo, is, the Brazilian chorizo is a little different from the Portuguese. Yeah. The Brazilian yeah. one, we use uh, a blood. Blood sausage. Yes. Oh, interesting. That's the interesting. chorizo for us. Huh. Wow. That's how we used to make back in the We don't do that anymore, but they used to, uh, what we used to do, we kill the pig, yeah. save the blood, and use uh, mix that with garlic, salt, uh, onions, and peppers, and, and put that on the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the casings, mm -hmm. and boil that. So when you're ready to serve again, we just slice and fry that. That's how we used to serve that back then. Wow, that's a, that's really interesting because I know in the P Portuguese and Azorian cuisines, that chorizo is really, it shows up a lot. Yeah, it's a staple. But the blood sausage doesn't show up. Yeah, we don't true. see that at all in yeah. this country. Yeah. But that's how we move up. That's a chorizo in Brazil. That's what it is. Interesting. So. Huh. And how about potatoes? Because they're big in Portuguese food, right? Not, not for us. No. Not really. No, we don't. Really. Eat the, the, uh, the biggest thing in Brazil is rice. Mm. Rice and beans, that's where it's like the main dish over there. Every house you go in Brazil, they got to have the rice and the beans. And then side dish, they're going to have some uh, some vegetables, meat, chicken, or something like that. But it's like, yeah, that's that's a big item over there. Yeah. Potatoes, I mean, not so big. I mean, the yeah. first time I ate mashed potato, I was probably like 17, 18 years old. Oh, wow. We, wow. Yeah, we never, I, never, I mean, we didn't, we didn't grow up like eating that kind of stuff over there. So yeah. it's rice and beans, basically. And how about um, interesting peppers? I know, like Peru, in Peru, I think they use some, that ahi pepper, which you don't see here so much. You we, guys, you... we use a uh, malagueta, which uh. is like a, a small one, but that little small one can do a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> so super hot. Oh, they're super hot. Like we used to have that in the backyard. Like they uh, once they ready, like they nice right, like the red flame color. So it's like it's ready. So they uh, how we do it? Just let them sit in the oil. Uh. And uh, my mom, I actually I brought some. I still have that. I brought some back, like from Brazil, like six, seven years ago. My mother made and put a little jar for me. I still have that at home, <laughs> and that thing is like hot. Wow, it's wow. really hot. Well, you've got a restaurant to run, and we've got some mokeka to finish. Yeah, so. right. Exactly. <laughs> so thanks again, Agnaldo. Thank you guys. See you for next time me. on Short and Sweet.